Hey everyone, it's Terry. I want to show you a couple of ideas of things that you can create with your machine using my design center and embroidery designs and, and some of the quilting designs that are built into your machine. The first thing I want to mention to you, if you see this little design here and I'm in the layout screen, I created an outline here using a shape and this is in black thread. I would not want to stitch this out because I had an offset to it so I could create the chain stitches. If I was going to have a satin stitch that is over this, I might stitch it in a different color. It wouldn't matter or I can just skip it. So there's a couple of things you need to think about when you create these designs. We'll return and let me just group everything together to delete this design and save it to memory if you aren't sure whether you saved it or not, and we'll choose delete. So let me show you a couple of the designs that I've created that are going to be similar to the one that we're doing today. So we'll look at this first design here that I really like, we'll choose set. And this is created with a combination of different stitches. Let me make it larger so you can see it. So we have an embroidery design. We have candle wicking stitches from my design center. We have the quilt motif that's here. Then we have the chain stitch that's in my design center. Then we also have these decorative background spills from my design center. When you're creating something like this, there's a certain order to it. So let me choose close. Let's group it all together so I can delete it from the screen and I'll show you how to do it. So the first thing you want to do is, is your quilt stitch. And the reason you want to do that is because your quilt stitch is, it, once you add an embroidery design to the center, it would give you an error message when you try to combine them. So to save yourself some time, create your quilt stitch first. So we'll choose set, I'll choose 120, these are millimeters by 120 millimeter by 30 millimeter. And the reason I did that is I'm going to resize it. Okay, I'll save that to memory. When you save it to memory, you can recall it. And I've done that several times. And so you might see it in, in my memory, but we'll go ahead and recall that by choosing set. So I selected it and I choose set. And now what I want to do is to go in and first of all, I'm going to add a grid and you'll see why, because I want to rotate this. And then the next thing I'm going to do is to decide if I want to resize it. I might like the size of it. If I do, I don't need to resize it. If I am going to resize it, select the second icon to the right. And that way you'll maintain the same stitch size and density. If you use the first one, and let's say you made it larger, it would keep the original uh, stitch count. And that means that it would be a lower density. And there may be applications for that where you want to do it. I'll choose okay, we'll just rotate the design. And then I'll rotate it in one degree increments. And this is visual. I'm just trying to see if I have it set up correctly. And I, I like that. I'll choose OK. Now I'll choose Add. And I can add an embroidery design to this. I could add an, uh, an, an alphabetic letter. In fact, let's do that. We'll select one of these letters and see if we, a small one will fit in. I don't know whether it will or not, but we'll find out. So we'll go in and let's go down to the smaller motifs and we'll choose the letter M and we'll choose set. Now let's go into edit and see if we can resize this. And to resize it, I want to reduce it proportionally. And I like that. Now you may decide that you don't like it because you feel like that it's leaning too far over on the right or whatever, but you know, this is a personal preference. So 
you can do whatever you want. You can always put a shape in, in the inside and add other decorative stitches. We're not going to do all of that and because I want this video to be relatively short. So we'll go ahead and we're going to add a shape around the outside of this and I, I do want to create a stamp on the inside as well, but I'm going to add the shape first because I want to show you something. So we'll go in, add the shape, we'll choose category three and choose number 10 and choose set. Now what I want to do is go to edit and let's rotate this so that it, actually I do not want to rotate it because this is already on point. I do want to resize it shapes are vector art and when you have vector art you do not have to worry about the stitch count because the machine will set the correct stitch count now what i do want to do is skew this in from the side and i'm doing this visually so it may not be perfect but we can always adjust it and we'll just go with this right now for speed and now what we're going to do is group everything together and choose OK and we're going to create a stamp. Now you notice it created a stamp around the outermost outline. When you have a design inside it's not going to create a stamp. If you wanted to put additional stitches between this you could and to do that you need to create another stamp. What I might do though, let's return, let's see how far we are from our frame. What I might do is make that shape larger. And to do that, let's go in and let's find it first of all. And let's resize it a little bit so that I can show you what I'm talking about. All right, and now we'll go ahead and we'll group this all together again and we'll choose OK. We'll create the stamp, which is going to be on the outside of this. Now, if I want to have some distance for my stitch, meaning I, I don't want to have it right up against my embroidered design, I, I can do that right now. And I think though, what I'm going to do is just give it a, a distance of one or two millimeters. and we'll save this to memory. Now this is saving as a stamp for my design center. Now what I want to do is select this interior design to create a stamp around it as well. And again, I want to add some distance because I'm going to put a little decorative fill. Actually, I'm going the wrong way. I want to put a decorative fill between those stitches. And We'll go out about two millimeters and save that one to memory. All right, now we're ready to go and choose add and go to my design center. In my design center, what we're going to do, first of all, is specify the size of the boundary of our design. And by that, I'm going to select my hoop size, which is 240 by 240. I want to add a no sew line to that. Now you could stitch a satin stitch around it or one of the other stitches, but I don't want that. So I want a no sew. Now I want to go and pick up the shapes that are created. So I'll select this first shape. I'll choose okay. And without resizing it, I need to go back and get the next shape and we'll select it and choose okay. All right, I now have these two shapes and I can decide if I want to, what kind of stitch I want to put around this. I think to, for simplicity's sake, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add a satin stitch. And what I'll do is choose a satin stitch and select a color. And let's choose this light blue. And we'll take the bucket and we'll apply it to both sets of stitches. All right, the next thing we're going to do is put a decorative fill in the backgrounds. And so we'll choose set. 
and we'll choose a pattern that has quite a bit of detail to it because I'm going to increase it by 200%. So I'll go ahead and let's choose this rose pattern. We'll choose okay. Let's choose a color. I'll choose red or pink and let's take the bucket and fill it into the background so you can see it there. And now what we want to do is we want to fill a decorative fill into the, the inside. You really can't see the, that other stamp, which is disappointing, but we'll go ahead and see if we can, can find it. And this is one of the things that I hope that brother will make a change because it, it is confusing. So I'll go in and let me find the other decorative fill that I want to use. So we'll go in and in this case I want to create something simple. So I'll choose the circles. I'll choose OK. We'll choose a different color and choose OK. And now I'll take it and fill it in and I'm guessing that it's here. Now you can see this is the inside here. That's not what I wanted to do. So I'll choose undo and I'll fill it in in that space and I'm okay and I'll choose next. All right, here's what we're going to do. The first thing I want to do is on the circles, I'm going to leave them the size they are, but I do not want to have the outline. So I'll turn the outline off and choose okay. And now the next thing I want to do is to adjust the size of the decorative fill on the outside. This is a little rose pattern. We're going to increase this to 200% and choose OK. And we'll turn off the outline as well. So the outline is off on it. And now what we'll do is we'll adjust the size of our next stitch, which is going to be the satin stitch around these designs. I think what I will do is link these together and I want to make them about three millimeters. Let's make it three and choose okay. All right, let's save it to memory. And you do want to save to memory because if you don't, Anything that you create, if you wanted to go back, is going to be lost. Once you select set, that's it. It's the point of no return. Okay, let's look at our design. We'll talk about it. So we'll zoom in and let's go to the stitch player. And you can see what our design looks like and I'll stitch it out. Now, one thing I'll tell you, there is one line I will not sew and it is going to be the shape outline. It's a black thread. So I'll stitch out everything you see here, but I will not stitch this line because it's not necessary, first of all. And then my satin stitch that I created, and we'll wait to see the satin stitch patterns. The satin stitch is it not going to cover it. And that's another reason why I won't, will not stitch it out. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and choose close. We'll save this design to memory because you don't want to recreate it again. You would go over into embroidery. You would go to your stitch player. And normally when I'm doing something like this, if you had this in your embroidery software, you would decide how you want to stitch this out. Normally I'm going to create a quilt sandwich to stitch this out. I would stitch from the inside to the outside because fabric is going to push and move. And if you're quilting, that's what you do. You start in the center. So you would go into your stitch order and start stitching your monogram, then move through your stitch order to, to select the rest of your stitches. In software, you can reorder it. In the sewing machine, what you have to do is select it. And when I get to this black outline, I will not stitch it. So I would stitch my monogram. I would stitch this green that is the decorative quilt pattern. Then I would go ahead and 
stitch the next background, which is going to be the circles. And the reason I'm doing that is I want those circles to be underneath the satin stitches. So you have to think a little bit about some of this. And the other thing that I, after the circles, I would stitch this background fill, which is the outline, before I stitch my satin stitches. My satin stitches would be the last stitches that I stitch because I want them to cover any of the other stitches. So think about those kinds of things and have fun. Thank you everyone for your time today. It's my pleasure showing you how to use your machine. If you'd like to join us in my Facebook group, it's called Just Stitching with the Brother Luminaire. I'm a, a contributor to the PE Design 11 group. And as always, I appreciate your time. Please subscribe to my channel and like my videos and let me know if there's something that I can do to help you. Thank you.